Shalom, shalom. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, the Messiah. I pray that you are well. I pray that you are victorious, that you're prosperous, that you lack nothing, that you're at peace, that you are excelling in every area of your lives, that you are whole and healthy, healed, and that God remains first and foremost in your lives. Greetings, Nene and Kiki. How y'all doing? Good to see you. I just want to come by here this, uh, well, what time is it? It's midnight. Uh, this morning. And speak to you concerning a very, uh, a very vital subject that the Lord has been dealing with me uh, very heavily and very, very strongly about for quite some time now. I have really been uh, doing some re research and studying and um, as I always do, but uh, concerning the resurrection, uh, concerning the ascension and the accession of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Um, first, before I begin, um, I just want to address uh, my friends, brothers and sisters all over the world, throughout the nations that this broadcast will reach. And I... Uh, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for giving ear to this message. Uh, as you know that uh, we're living in dark days right now and many false prophets are arising. Many false prophets have already arrived, been here for a while, but even more so in these coming days as the days get darker, as the signs of the times become more uh, frequent and more prevalent in our world. So uh, just shout out to Africa. God bless you, the motherland. I greet you, Mother Africa, and all your people, all our people, in West Africa, in the South Africa, East Africa, North Af Africa, Central Africa. God bless you all. Uh, to Asia, to Near East Asia, uh, to Western Asia, uh, erroneously known as the Middle East, uh, and to Far East Asia, God bless you all and your people. Uh, I address you, Europe, and your many, uh, your many countries. God bless you. Uh, to you, UK, to uh, Spain, to uh, England, Britain, uh, to you in Italy, France, Ireland, Scotland. God bless you all in Europe, all right? Uh, to the Caribbean islands, I say God bless you, all right, to Trinidad, all right, to Jamaica, to the Virgin Islands, to all of the islands, Puerto Rico, uh, St. Lucia, all of you in the Caribbean, I can't call all your names, but God bless you, and to you in the Pacific Islands. God bless you. God bless you, Solomon Islands, Samoa. God bless you, Papua New Guinea. God bless you all. Uh, glad you're here. Fiji, Philippines, all of you in the islands, the Pacific Islands. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And finally, to the United States, to America, all of you who are in this country, the land of the free and the home of the brave. God bless you to every city and state, every neighborhood. And to you who are in my hometown in North Carolina, in Goldsboro, God bless you all. May heaven smile upon you. So, with that being taken care of, let's get on to the message at hand. All right? So we're going to be talking about something that's very near and dear to Yahweh's heart that he wants us all as believers to grasp, uh, to look at, to observe with 
a critical eye to critically think about the ascension and the accession of Yeshua the Messiah. Now, as you know, we just come out of the Pesach season, the Easter season, and we were talking uh, earlier in the week about the resurrection of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ, how he died on the cross, he suffered and bled and died for the sins of the whole world, and he was buried in a tomb that didn't even belong to him. And he rose again on the third day. And when he rose from the grave, he rose with all power in his hands. He had the keys to death and hell. He still has those keys. And so the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Now, when we talk about ascension, we have to cover this uh, scripturally. And let's see what the Bible says about the ascension of Yeshua the Messiah. In Luke chapter 24, verses 51 and 52, we find where he was parted from them, from the, the disciples. He was parted and carried up into heaven. Okay? Uh, in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, we see where the Messiah was taken up. He ascended. Okay. In Acts 1 verses 9 through 11, we see where the Messiah was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. He ascended, rose, and some spiritual people will look at this as a type of levitation. Well, the Bible says he was taken up and he was received by a cloud, a cloud engulfed him, took him, undergirded him, and lifted him out of the sight of his disciples who would become apostles. Uh, we have to define this word ascension, to be lifted up. What does it mean to ascend? Okay. What, ascension is the act of rising up, basically. It is the act of being lifted to an important position. Now, we know that Yeshua was and is and will be the only begotten son of the most high God, Yahweh Elohim. And we know that that in itself is the highest position because he is the word made flesh. Okay. King of kings, Lord of lords, the first and the last, alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. All right. To ascend. What is ascension? It is a spiritual awakening that moves us into a higher level of consciousness. So when we ascend, we ascend mentally, consciously, emotionally. We ascend from this earthly plane, from this carnal sphere of reasoning into a higher state of consciousness where the Lord God is we think along with Yahweh. We think with God. We don't just think about God when we ascend. Ah. But to ascend with the Messiah from the earth means that we first have to be resurrected from death. That means there has to be a, a revival that has taken place in us. And what does the word revival refer to? Revival is synonymous to resurrection. Because in order for there to be a revival, there has to be a death of something or someone. So when the Lord Jesus died, he was buried and he rose from the dead. He was resurrected. He was revived. Okay? So when we who are believers and followers of Yeshua the Messiah... When we uh, confess our sins and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, that same power that raised up Yahshua the Messiah also raises us up from the dead. All right? Now we are become new. We are new creatures in Christ. We are born of the water and of the spirit. 
So we have been revived. We have been resurrected. Okay. But after the resurrection comes something else that must take place. That must take place. And after the resurrection, every believer, after having been renewed and born again, we must now ascend as Christ ascended from the earth when the cloud took him and lifted him out of the sight of the apostles and he ascended up into heaven. We too have to ascend, okay? We have to rise to a higher level of consciousness spiritually and we have to rise and take our place as sons of God, as joint heirs with Yahshua, the Messiah, who now sits on the right hand of the Father. So, uh, that's what it means to ascend, meaning that we no longer think along the lines of a carnal mind. We think spiritually, we think critically with God. What does that mean exactly? That means that we have been transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove what is good, what is perfect, what is acceptable. In the will of God. Now, think about it. When we ascend into a higher level of consciousness, we are of the Messiah's mind. We are of the Christ mind. We now think like God and think with God. We flow with God. We feel with God because God feels. He has emotions. Okay? So, uh, we cannot remain in a carnal state of mind, meaning we cannot continue to perceive and look at the conditions of our present natural state in the state of our world with carnal eyes. But we must look at it as God sees it. And the only way to do that is to look at it through the lens of the word of God, meaning we need to study to show ourselves proved, approved to God, workmen, all right? craftsmen who will not be ashamed because we know how to rightly divide, dissect the word of truth. So we need to die. <laughs> we need to die to ourselves, die to our own emotions, our feelings, our ego, die to our own personal perceptions and, and our own opinions. And look at things the way God looks at it, the way God perceives it. And the only way to do that, once again, is through the lens of the word of Yahweh, Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, to ascend, we ascend with Christ when we allow him to renew our minds by and through the word of God. We got to die to ourselves, die to the flesh. What is the flesh? Thank you, Keisha. I see you. What is the flesh? The flesh is here. The flesh is not so much this stuff. The flesh is there. It's in your mind. Our point of reference, our frame of reference, our personality, so to speak, our reasoning ability, our observations, our emotions, our soul, intellect, the ability to make decisions, our will. And when our will, when our ability to choose, when our emotions are not checked, when they don't go through the filter of God's word, they are carnal. And we have yet to ascend into the Christ mind. Again, the Christ mind is the mind that has been renewed, that has been transformed by the word of God. So when the Messiah actually ascended from earth, he was on his way up from the earth to heaven. We, we can't be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. We know that, right? But... We have to get to a point where we ascend from the way the earth operates. From, from, we got to ascend from the way the world thinks. 
We have to ascend from the way the world chooses and makes decisions. We have to ascend from the way we would do it or the way we would say it. We have to ascend from how we feel about it. Ascend from earth, the earthly plane, the natural, the carnal plane. Ascend into the mind of Christ, which is the word of God, and begin to flow along with God. Think with God. Think and flow with him in the spirit through and by the word of God. It's the Holy Spirit within us that will lead us and guide us into all truth, that will bring all things back to our remembrance. It will bring everything that Christ taught and the apostles taught back to our remembrance. Okay, so that's what it means. We have to lift up from this earth and ascend into heavenly mind. Okay, that's the power of ascension. That is ascension in all its splendor. And we all, all of us, who are called out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, we must ascend from the earth and go to our rightful place in the heavens. Because to ascend means, means to rise to uh, an important position, or to rise to a prominent status. We are now priests and kings, and, and we are now sons of God. Okay, so what do we do when we ascend? Once we get into the heavenly mind, once we get into the heavens, into the spirit, what do we do? What's next? There is the ascension. And there is the accession. Okay? Now we're going to move into this teaching. The accession of Christ. Found in Psalm 110 and 1. Where it's written, My Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand. David is speaking prophetically. About how Yeshua would rise from the dead. And he would ascend into heaven. And the Lord said, sit at my right hand. Okay? He is seated. So basically what accession is, is after we ascend from earth and reach the heavens in spirit and in mind, we now have taken our rightful place. We have a prominent position. So now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That, that is what it means to access or to achieve accession. Meaning now we have access to almighty power. We have access to almighty love and grace, mercy. We have access. The accession means that after you have ascended, you have taken your seat. You have taken your place. Now, you are a son who has been given access to all that the Father has to offer. Okay? The Bible says, during the accession, and we can read about this in Matthew 26 and 24. During the accession, Messiah will be seated at the right hand of power. Again, accession, it means to be seated. Now, you have been received and you have been installed. You have been anointed. You have been proven and securely put in your place as a son of God and given all the benefits of the son of God. That is the accession. You have taken your seat. You are now seated in heavenly places with the Messiah. Okay, in Romans 8 and 34, we can see where the Messiah died, was raised, and is at the right hand of God interceding for us. So, we have ascended. We have taken our seat. And as Christ is interceding for us, we too are priests who must intercede for others. We need to intercede for others, stand in the gap, okay? Christ, he got our backs, but we must also have each other's back. 
as sons of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Colossians 3 and 1, the Bible says how the Messiah is seated at the right hand of God. Once again, he is seated. He has taken his accession, okay? It's just like when uh, there is a new king or a new prince or governor, when they come into position and the ceremony, they have been dubbed king, dubbed, you know? They put their right hand on the Bible during the presidency when he uh, takes his oath. And now he has arisen. He has ascended into the, to the, into the office of president. But it isn't until he makes, takes that oath, put his right hand on the Bible, that he actually takes his place. He actually now has the power, all the powers of the president. He has taken accession. He has access now. So that's basically what that is. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12, we can see how the Messiah is seated. Once again, to be in accession means that you are seated now in the heavens with Christ. Okay? So we want to make that plain and clear and let you know that uh, in Revelations chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says how... The one who conquers. Now, this is Yeshua, the Messiah, talking to John on the Isle of Patmos. He said, the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. As I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. What is he talking about? He sat down. It, whoever conquers... Whoever conquers, I will grant him to sit with me, to take accession, as I also conquered and took accession and sat with my father on his throne. So we have been given authority from the Almighty God, power from the Almighty God, strength and the ability to rise up from our natural state into a heavenly state of mind and consciousness. And it's not all about consciousness. It's about spirit, most of all. Because once our spirit has been born again, once we are made new, then we are now joined with Christ. And we are now seated in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a scripture um, that I want to read, and I'm going to bring this to a close. Uh, there's a scripture that I, I, I must read this, and um, the Bible is very clear when it talks about what we must do as children of God in order to reign with Him, okay? So... In order to reign with him, the Bible says we must suffer with him, right? Again, we're talking about death, all right? We need to suffer with him. In order to reign with him, we got to suffer. We have to do three things if we are to follow the Messiah. And those three things, first, we have to deny ourselves, deny our flesh, deny our own mind, our own thinking, our own way of doing things, our own emotions even. Deny our passions. That's number one. Number two, we have to take up our cross. What does that mean? We have to embrace suffering. We have to suffer with Messiah as Messiah. Okay? And yes, Keisha, for righteousness sake, Suffer for Christ with Christ. All right. Now, if you're suffering for something that you did wrong for a crime or a sin, then you're not suffering with Christ. You are reaping what you sowed. But to suffer with Christ for Christ means that we suffer and we go through persecution and trial and tribulation all because of the name of Jesus Christ. For the gospel's sake, because of the light that burns within us, because we have been separated, sanctified, and set apart. 
and the world is dark and darkness hates the light. Okay, so uh, this scripture that I want to read is in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 through 6. And it reads, But Elohim, who is rich in compassion because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Messiah. By favor, you have been saved. By grace are you saved. All right? And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Messiah. That is the accession. We have been raised together and been placed on the seat. We have been made to sit together to be joined with the Messiah. All right? So, what, we're, what are we talking about? First of all, I got to say this before I close. We must ascend before we access. We must ascend before we gr be granted access. We have to ascend. We cannot be granted full access to what God has until we ascend. Okay? Some of us have not ascended. A lot of us want to ascend. And I've been talking about ascension for a long time. But I think it's going over a lot of people's head. We don't fully understand. I hope now you understand it fully. But to ascend means that you don't operate the way earth people operate. I know it sounds like we're talking about, you know, we're aliens or something or out of space. No. No, 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 no. We are heavenly creatures. We are heavenly creatures. We are the sons of God. And we have been given access. But we can't achieve accession until we ascend. Meaning we have to get up from where we are we have to leave our present state of thought, our present way of operating. We have to leave this carnal plane, our carnal passions, leave, ascend, rise above that and take our rightful place in the heavens, on the seat with Yeshua the Messiah and think like Messiah. Think with the Messiah. That means we're not dwelling on pettiness of the flesh. We're not dwelling on uh, these things that are carnal, that has nothing to do with spiritual progression or spiritual excellence or holiness. We have to take our rightful place in the heavenlies. Again, in order for us to be granted access to the fullness of God and all of the benefits that are due to us. All of the power, the power that's in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We have to ascend. Now listen, it's just like the brain. Uh, you ask any medical doctor, uh, especially those who specialize in the brain or neurology. Uh, they will tell you that we only use a small percentage of our brain. Okay, even the smartest person on earth is not using their full brain. Okay, we're not using the full capacity, the full power. All right, we only, I think the most that's been used on earth is about 10%. Average use is anywhere from 3 to 5% of our brain. But think of all. Oh, all of the power, all of the things that we could do if we had full access to use all of our brain. What does that have to do with anything? Adam in the garden and Eve before the fall. I am almost certain that the only way he was able to flow with God and to think with God and to name Everything on the earth, all the creatures, the animals, plants, everything was named by Adam. The Lord gave him that ability, gave him the authority, and sat back to see what he would name it. Look at the Bible. The Bible says he wanted to see what Adam would name it. 
The reason why he wanted to observe him was to make sure that Adam was flowing with him, was thinking with him, because what Adam named it, God had already named. But God stood, stepped back and, and wanted to observe, to see what he would name it. And he was flowing with God. He was of the God mind. He was in a state of ascension and accession. You see? So, with that being said, I pray that there was something said here that has blessed you, that has enlightened you in some way. And uh, God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. I pray that you all will, well, that we all will continue to ascend. Because there, there are different levels of ascension. We don't all ascend at the same time. We don't all ascend at the same time rate of speed, okay? We're not all on the same level. So you have to know that the more you ascend, the more access to power you have. Yes, the power is already there. You have the almighty power in you right now. The kingdom of God is in you right now. That's almighty power. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But a lot of us don't have full access because we haven't ascended. OK, in order for us to be used in healing, signs, wonders, miracles, whatever there is to be used in, we have to ascend. OK, now you should know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, along with the spiritual gifts that come with it and the fruit that are born with it, there are different levels. We don't all get it at the same time or at the same rate. So you have to understand that. Every day, there should be a higher level of ascension. Every day, we should ascend a little more. But in order to ascend, we got to die. So that means we have to die a little more every day in order to ascend a little more every day. You understand me? So the more we die, the more we ascend. The more we die to us to our passions, to our egos, to ourselves, to our flesh, the more we ascend. And when we ascend, we can have access on that level. You see? So, no one has arrived, all right? No one has arrived. But we're all working toward growing into Christ. Growing into Messiah. And that is true Messiahship. When we have died with him. When we rose from the grave and was resurrected in a newness of life with him. When we ascend from this plane to take our seat with him. Then we are surely the sons of God. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. I love you. May heaven smile upon you. Share this video. Let somebody know that we need to ascend so we can have access.